Well, it's funny you should say that, right? Because I went to a market at one point just to look at the uh, things that were for sale there. There's lots of eels and lots of fish and lots of other interesting mm -hmm. items, right? So I'm looking at the market, I'm taking some photos, and I notice this, I hear this kind of murmur, right, that's going around the market, and then I start to see them, all the people in the market, sort of pointing, right, and staring and talking at something, right? So I'm looking around, trying to figure out what it is, right? And I realise they're looking and pointing at me. I genuinely swear to God, right? So they start, and then... Did they think one of the big eels had escaped? Well, they started laughing. Oh, no. They started openly pointing and laughing. <laughs> one of them, right, started, like, I think he was a postman. He, he looked like he might be a Vietnamese postman. I don't know why that should make any difference. But he started doing a sort of lumbering, sort of Frankenstein walk. <laughs> and pointing at me, right? A load of, a whole section of them just started cackling with laughter. And then at one point, a woman in one of those sort of Vietnamese lampshade hats, right, she runs up behind me and she attaches to my back a sort of kick me thing that you would have detached to someone, some nerd at school's back, right? She actually put something like that on my back. I don't realise initially, so they're just chortling. They are weeping by now. And I'm talking like the whole market is in hysterics. And old ladies are coming up to me and just, you know, comparing their heights and then giggling. And then I'm sort of trying to get this thing off my back so I look like a dog, you know, chasing its tail. <laughs> and, uh, and I, pe people, I just realised that this entire marketplace was just openly laughing at me. And what angered me, Rick, was that I've spent a lot of time in this country, in the UK, right, building up a career, right, so that people don't laugh at me, right? They respect right. me, they see me as yeah. a man of great accomplishments and achievements. Yeah. I go to another country where With I- With that hat. <laughs> exactly. Walking around with those glasses with a little, with a little um, money belt on, maybe yeah. sandals. Sandals with socks because I got a foot infection. <laughs> <laughs> and it turns out that they're just laughing at me. They're just <laughs> openly mocking and laughing at me, right? So I just genuinely, I got upset and I got in a, in a... You uh, threw down a, your cagoule, left your clogs behind and got on the first plane back. I hopped in a rickshaw straight back to the hotel where they do not laugh at me openly. <laughs> Um, but anyway, to, just to return to the dong issue, right, this was what worried me, was that, uh, obviously you got a tip, so we had a driver for a few days, right, and you got to leave him a tip, and you, I never will feel a bit awkward, when do you give him the tip and everything, how does it work, and so I, I didn't know how much it should be, and I was thinking, well, you know, it's a poor country, I've had to drive for a couple of days, you know, I haven't paid for the driver, so I give him, like, twenty dollars, right, which is like ten quid, you know, I'm thinking that seems like a good tip. I get in there, I read in the guidebook, I should have only given him two dollars. So? I gave twenty. That's well, right. now I'm, but no, because a, you don't want to upset the precious equilibrium. You don't want to upset the financial equilibrium because he might have gone berserk. Yeah, I mean, twenty. That's twenty dollars. There's a lot to him. He might have left his family. You know, bought a different. You know, corrugated iron shack. So he turned up with a hat like yours and said, <laughs> "Exactly, we're mates now, aren't we? We're mates now. Let's go <laughs> yeah. back to England. Let's pick up some uh, some ladies." So, um, so I, uh, I uh, was a bit worried. So I, I was thinking of asking for the money, you know, for some change, but I didn't think that was appropriate. So, um, but then I was worried because then I was thinking, what if all the other drivers within his organisation find out that I've given him like twenty dollars? They're all going to be expecting a big tip. Yeah. So that was a big worry. Um, but more than that, we'd also had a guide with us, so he was bound to find out how yeah. that how the things. Right now, I didn't have any dollars left, oh. and I thought, well, I've given that guy twenty. I have got to give the guy who's been talking English to us, showing us around, helping us out. I got to give him 50. even more. Right, I ended up giving him a million dong. And how much is that? Sixty-three dollars. I tipped someone a million dollars. So he's a millionaire now. Yeah, I, t I made someone a millionaire through my generosity. Well, so well, so did I. He's sitting over there. <laughs> That's absolutely but right. He doesn't want to give anything back. So I know how you feel, mate. Young, old man. Carl. Now you know traditionally at the zoo they have to um, dart a dangerous animal, a lion or uh, a gorilla or, or whatever. What? They have to dart it. Oh yeah. Right. Yeah, yeah. To uh, to um, take blood samples and check its health and stuff. Uh, so it's very stressful for the animal and quite dangerous to give it a, 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 an anaesthetic like that. So what they've started doing now, there's a bug, right, like a, um, a type of um, beetle, uh, and uh, it's a blood sucker. It's a little vampire bug, okay, it's about three centimetres long. What they do is, they tie a piece of string around it, they let it go into the, the cage on the chimp, it sucks the chimp's blood without the chimp even knowing, they pull it back, and they take the blood sample from it. They've taught it to do that? Well, they're not taught it to do anything. That's its nature. You put it near a, a, a warm-blooded mammal, it will suck its blood. So they've just tied a string to it so they can get it back. And how often does it have to do that a day? 
Well, I don't know. I don't know. I, why are these the important questions? Just because. <laughs> just isn't because that incredible that they've they've got they've got this amazing symbiotic relationship with a bug? Because that's is it what the same it, one. Safety's no, eight chimps. Oh, jeez, Carl, listen to me. No, let him. I want to. I'm hear just these saying, questions. if there's eight chimps in there, yeah, uh, one beetle, yeah. By about number five, that's going to be sick of eating. Well, then they probably have different beetles, and they let it, and. Carl, I don't know why this is the. It the, just. I tell you why it annoys me. The avenue of annoys him. The other concern is uh, that beetle. It might be enjoying, you know, getting the blood and what have you. What happens if if one of them's got got AIDS? What one of the one of the chimps? That's where it came from. So safety's. Well, then they're, then they know and they say, oh, this chimp's got AIDS. Let's. And what about the beetle? What you're saying? You're worried that the beetle will contract AIDS? Well, I, I don't know if that's how it works, but all I'm saying is. You get a dirty chimp in there. Um, <laughs> it's got it's got a touch of that, and 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 the and the, the beetle gets it. And all I'm saying is, it seems a bit unfair. It's what are you worried about? The beetle working hard. It's eating what it's this like. Is, this is the same as getting in foreigners to make cheap trainers. To me, they you know let the beetle do what it wants. I mean, beetle, how long do they live? I read the other day about some elephant beetle. They get about four months. Right. What do you think of this, right? This elephant what? beetle in the paper the other day. Yeah. About the size of a gerbil. Right. Massive. Um, odd looking thing. Mm. The bigger, the uglier it is. Why are you looking at me? No. <laughs> in a way, that is the way it works, isn't it? I think, I think size, size is a big deal, isn't it, in a way, because... This is interesting. Well, we better, we better, we better being smaller, aren't we? Well, it depends. What do you mean? Well, no, if you're afloat in the Atlantic Ocean and... It's four degrees centigrade. It'd be better to be fat. Um, I didn't really mean like that. I just no. meant in terms of like Steve. I've mentioned he's taller than us. Yeah, he's always ill. Well, that's not uh, his height. I just think bigger people. It's like that Zhang Lung or whatever the world's tallest man. He's always sneezing and that. He's always got something up with him because he's not meant to be that big. Small fellas, you never see a midget in a doctor's waiting room. <laughs> <laughs> they never get. They never get ill, do they? You never see one getting run over because they're too small, so you don't hit them. So it's it's. I think size. If you're too big, <laughs> you never see a midget in a doctor's waiting room. So so. The well, thing, maybe they're there. No, they're not. They're not. So what I'm saying to you is, this beetle that's massive, size of a gerbil. Yeah, this, but it's still. Well, but a gerbil's small. What do you mean? No, this is a big one. This beetle is massive. It lives four months. Lives four months. Been found in a banana crate. Right. Right. It's over here. They're upset for it because it's been in this banana crate for. It could be like three months. Um, and the whole purpose of the elephant beetle is to have it away. That's all it wants in its life. It's only got four months and it loves having it away with another beetle. <laughs> and it hasn't had it. So they, they found it in this crate and it looked distraught. They said it was showing all signs of like desperately wanting to have it away. It was well, when you can wank yourself to death with six legs, you, you leave anything alone for three months in a dark crate. Just eating a load of bananas. Yeah, eating bananas and whacking away. Well, anyway, six uh, times at the same, exactly the same moment. His feet, his feet go. Apparently, I bet it does. Um, what do you mean, his feet go? That's a sign. When they got it out, they they were um, they they got the experts in. They said, "What what is this? We've got a beetle here, the size of a gerbil." They said, "We'll come round." They had a look. <laughs> <laughs> I said, "Well, how big's the gerbil?" That's just scientists HQ. Is there? Yeah, yeah. You can come round. <laughs> right, right. You'll need a gerbil-sized box to bring that round in. <laughs> Come round, uh, ring uh, operator. Uh, can I have uh, people in charge of giant gerbil beetles? Uh, I'll put you through. Uh, hello, gerbil beetle people. Um, I think I've got one. Come round. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, its feet were going. What, what do, do you mean its feet, feet were going? going? Do you mean it was dancing like Lionel Blair or it had bunions? I haven't seen one, but <laughs> there's a surprise. I, I, I just read that the, that they were saying, yeah, yeah, we know what's the problem here. Look at its legs go, and it, and they go up and down a lot, and it means that <coughs> it wants it wants like a, a partner, it's dying for it. And they were saying they only live four months, and it looks about three and a half months old. This one. <laughs> How can they tell that? But the problem the problem is they right. haven't got any of these beetles here. Right. So they've had to instead of uh, flying it back out. Yeah. They've gone over there to try and find one to bring it back. Because of the stress and that that it's had, and it's older. Couldn't you put a gerbil in a beetle outfit? 
<laughs> Hang on a minute. I don't mean, I don't mean a little wig holding a guitar. But I don't know the full story in that. I just know that they found this beetle. It just sounds unlikely that people would be <laughs> this concerned about did, one beetle. <laughs> and it's only got half a month left. It's got yeah. two weeks left. It's got to have some sex. We have got to give this beetle some sex because, God damn it, it's a beetle. What was found on a boat with some yeah, bananas? I don't it deserves know why sex before it dies. I don't know why he cares more than a blood-sucking beetle than a chimpanzee. I just suddenly. can't believe people are flying why out to you, Japan. Why or do they you come care from? so much about beetles all of a sudden? Only because they were mentioned, and I just thought, you know, whilst we're on the beetle tip, let's, you know, let's discuss them. Oh, he's only got to read it down. <laughs> <laughs> that jingle there signifying, of course, once again, another reading from the Diary of Carl Pilkington. Now, of course, for those of you who have not been keeping abreast of Carl's medical complaints, um, just bring us up to speed, Carl. You had to go into hospital because previously you'd had I've been treatment. in and out, honestly. I've been yeah. in and out of that hospital just with uh, kidney problems, um, really painful and what have you. And, uh, yeah, he had so kidney I've, stones, all right? No, no, but seriously. I had a bit of a lion today because I have to get up early for my operation tomorrow. Not only have I got to have tubes shoved up my knob, but I also have to get up at 5.50. Suzanne said I could have what I want for my last dinner. It's not your last dinner, you're going for an operation. Yeah, but you, you, you can't take things for granted these days. Oh, for I had shepherd's pie and peas. Suzanne made it from scratch. As nice as it was, it was annoying. Because making stuff from scratch means loads of pots and it's my job to do the washing up. So much as the food was nice, there was loads of pans and that. People who get their last dinner on death row don't have to wash up. Got up at 5.55. You were supposed to be getting up at 5.50 on the other page. You were yeah. five minutes late getting up. He's often late. Often late. Got to the hospital and had to wait in the waiting room. There was another nine people in there waiting to be sorted. I got called in. They sat me on a bed and took all my details down. Five minutes later I'd been knocked out. I got woke up when they were ripping a pipe out of my throat. I felt more rough this time. The doctor came to see me and said he couldn't find a stone, so I must have passed it. I said, are you sure? He said, yeah, we filled your kidney with water and expanded it and there was no hiding place. I sat in the recovery room for an hour while they found me a bed. One of the fellows who was sat in the room with me this morning got wheeled in. They couldn't wake him up. All the nurses were laughing because he didn't want to wake up. I bet they were laughing at me when I was in the theatre. Someone told me they totally strip you when they're operating. I would have looked like the alien on the Boswell incident. <laughs> Boswell! Boswell! <laughs> it's quite a nice analogy if it weren't for the fact that you said Boswell. <laughs> it's, it's the Roswell incident. Didn't sleep much through the night because there was a 60-year-old fella shouting at the nurse about his pillows. I don't think I slept through a full hour with one thing or another going on. My bed was next to the toilet so I kept hearing the flush. How do they sleep in hospitals though? They wake you up to give you fucking sleeping pills and things, don't they? How do you sleep in there? I don't, I don't know what it is. There's no air. There's, there was an old fella across from me who kept breaking wind. He didn't even try and cover it. <laughs> he was just of that age where he didn't care. Just like, that's what I do. I'm in the hospital, leave me alone. <laughs> what do you mean? Just, I, I don't know what was wrong with him. He's, uh, I talked to him because at first I felt sorry for him. I was a little bit like, you know, he's, he's had no visitors. Uh, no one's calling him up, so I'll talk to him. But then he got that familiar with me that he'd just be doing it whilst I'm chatting to him. Just like he's my granddad or something. It's just like, oh, that's what he does. It's like, well, I'm ill as well. Stop doing that. <laughs> Honestly, unbelievable. He didn't even try and cover it with a cough. It was just like, that's... <laughs> with a cough! How would you cover it with a cough? Just non-stop. Got home and sat down. My pains are coming back, but the doctor said this would happen and that my insides are still in shock, so I need to take it easy. It's nine o'clock. I'm in agony. I can't do the diary for the rest of the day. Jesus. So you may as well just tell us then what happened. Suzanne just got frustrated with me because I was rolling about on the floor and she was trying to watch Arthur, right? Because <laughs> uh, that was on the other night. Uh, Arthur and, was uh, with your lodger. So, um... And she said, look, if you're in pain, do something. She said, you know... You went I and got a cold plate. Yeah. No, use an ashtray. Plates are for liver damage. <laughs> got in a taxi. Um, he filled up on the way, which was annoying. <laughs> <laughs> he didn't. That is he did. cheeky. That, that really, I mean, he could on the way to the pain. hospital. So, uh, he's always not an ambulance driver. So anyway, he gets us there and he doesn't charge us, which is pretty decent. Oh, that's all right, yeah. So this this gay fella came through. How did you know he was gay? Um, just the way he was. I'm not having a go. He was a, he was a good fella. Do you know what I mean? A he doctor, you mean? No, he was like a, he was a nurse. Right. Uh, and he, he came through and just sort of went, oh, how are you? 
And I was like, oh, I've had better days. So he, he got As me you mentioned it. in the diary, I remember the first time when I came here, they said the nurse might put a tablet up my arse. I thought the chances of that happening had just increased. <laughs> oh, God! Yeah, but I, I would have let him do it. Honestly, I was that sort of out of it. That of course you'd let him do it. He's a qualified nurse. No, but the way I am now, say if it was just a tablet for sorting out my blood pressure, mm. and I walked in there and he went, oh, hello, and he said, yeah, let's pop that. I'd go, hang on a minute. <laughs> But, but what I mean is that night I would I would have just let him put three up, honestly. <laughs> it's just weird, isn't it? How your body just goes, let him get on with it, and you let you trust anyone, don't you? When when you're in that much pain and you need and a they're a qualified nurse, yes. Mm. Carl, of course, has written a poem about the experience entitled "My Ward." All I've done here, I've been through a, you know, a, I don't know what the word is, a, a bad experience, trauma, a trauma. Yeah, I've been through a load of trauma. Mm. So, I'm just finishing it off with a little sort of picture for people. Go on then. Me, a Chinese fella and an old bloke who looked like Mr Burns from The Simpsons. Don't know what was wrong with him, but breaking wind was the symptoms. No one visited him or called him. He seemed quite lost to me. As well as wind problems, he had a colostomy. Bye. When I left, I said, see you to the old man. Turned out the other fella wasn't Chinese. He was from Japan. <laughs> I never found out what was up with him. <laughs> You've got a little picture there, haven't you, of me sat in my ward. I'm sat there with that fella who I didn't talk to, the old fella who had wind problems, and that's what a poem is, isn't it? But the detail about you thought he was Chinese and he turned out to be Japanese, how is that evocative? That's just a piece of misinformation. It's just I like, like it. I imagine a lot of people make it I like same it, because you know why? It's like... He even makes digressions within his poem. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like he could have gone back and erased that, but he didn't. He left he left that digression in, and I think that's that's great. To be honest, I had a late night last night because I stayed up to watch a programme about monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> it's already good. <laughs> of course he did. It's already good. Now, before I read on, I mean, is this not some kind of monkey news? Is this not a late return to monkey news? Uh, well, it's not. It's not that good. Is it not? Whereas the other monkey news is... Oh, chimpanzee, that's more shit! This is what he says. He, this is what he gleaned from the programme about monkeys. It sat on a bridge and wanted stuff off people to walk over the bridge. What? So it was acting as some kind of toll booth, This was is it? ridiculous. No, it was a bridge in, in, like, the jungle. Oh, shut the fuck up! And it's a monkey that sat on a bridge and um, a lot of tourists go through the area no, it's to, a monkey who realised that, that if he sits there, it gets stuff because it looked like it's a cute little chimp begging. No, but every time. Yeah, because mm. you give a monkey, you give it. To, oh, I'm as bad as him now. If you give a chimpanzee uh, a banana uh, and he starts realising that humans have things to give, yeah, but it's all squirrels sorts learn that. If you don't go, oh, you wouldn't say, oh, went to the park. The squirrels waiting at the gate. You, you have to give them a toll to go in. They don't do anything. Give them nuts. They come up to you every time. You, you fucking idiot. Went to bed after watching it and fell asleep thinking about it on the bridge right now. It's a bit bad, really, because the monkey should work harder for its food. It made me remember the slug I saw yesterday that was eating bird poo. <laughs> Nobody would ever help a slug with food like they do with ducks and monkeys. A slug's life is pretty bad. The only time they come out of their den is when it's raining. Den. So, so even their days out are depressing. <laughs> do you know what I mean? No. It is like, it's a horrible thing to be, isn't it? <laughs> a slug. <laughs> Talking about what is it like to be a slug? No, just because like the monkey, even though it's been quite aggressive, everyone was like, "Oh, give it some water." And it was it was well like kitted out. It had like you know chocolate bars, bottled water, some like you know fizzy stuff, and all that. An iPod. It was listening to monkey news. It could have had one if it wanted one. It was getting away with murder on that bridge, and that's just because it was furry. Yeah, if that was like a blob, like a slug. There's no way people would be that friendly towards it, and it just annoys me how you get this pecking order for, like, no matter what creature you are, favouritism. And that slug was only eating that bird poo because it wasn't being offered stuff. If it was offered toffees or whatever. <laughs> well, it's just sad, isn't it? It's, it's come to that. That's what its life has come to. <laughs> yeah, but it's not a it mollusk like that's down it's... on its fucking yeah, lap. It didn't live in a big country house no, and his wife left it, the kids I was, went and started hitting the bottle. And I kind of thought, and look, they do only come out in the rain and it's depressing and it'll probably get killed in a bit. And that was its last meal. I just... <laughs> last meal! People but it wouldn't care. prefer steak and chips, Carl. It no, doesn't a leaf. have... It must like a leaf or a... 
you know, at the end of the day, it's an insect. They love it. It's always. not an insect. Well, it's part of that gang. It's part of that. <laughs> no, it's part of they that. They hang out together. They it's hang out not. together. No, Why do you think it's part of that because gang? Because it, it knocks about in the woods in the same place as a spider does. But all I'm, uh, what I'm saying is they, they're eating boring stuff because that is what's It's in not their boring area. stuff to them. They're not, I have no opinion of it at all. They take in sustenance. No, but where you are is what you eat. When I'm in London, I'll have beans on toast for lunch. On holiday, what? Tapas? Go on, I'll have a bit. <laughs> so it's whatever you eat what's in that area. Suzanne went off to work and I went to the shop to buy some envelopes. The shop was empty, but the fellow behind the counter was on the phone and just kept talking, even though he could see I was waiting. I started to count backwards from 20. <laughs> when I got to six, he hung up and served me. I won't use the shop again. Question, why count backwards from 20? So he's thinking, what's going to happen at one? If I start counting from one, he's going, well, let him carry on. What, out loud? So, not, not really loud, but like, uh, more of a mouth action, so he could see who was doing it. Do you know like Sorry, that? you... You just started miming, counting backwards to a man in a shop. He's on the phone. The yes. shop is empty. Yes. I thought he'd like me custom. He could have served me and stay on the phone. Even though I don't like that, at least he's still doing what, what you know, he needs to do. I'd have said, sorry, can I just get these, please? Yeah. Well, I stood there and I thought, it's annoying me now, my kidneys ache aching and I started to get a bit of a sweat on. So I thought, right, I'm going to give him 20 seconds and if he hasn't got off the phone, I'm leaving. Again, you are one yourself... of the strangest people. It's just giving yourself a, a thing. I could have been stood there free. for ages. He's one of the strangest people who's free to walk yeah. the it's about, streets. No, I set myself a little target and I thought, I don't want to waste another 30 seconds in here, I'll give him 20. It worked. He had served me at six. But it didn't work. Yeah, but did he do it because you were doing that or did he finish his phone call? I don't know, I was busy counting. Yeah. What happened to Chris Moles' show? Is he not on anymore? On the TV? Yeah. No. Turns out he was too fat and talentless. <laughs> um, <laughs> do you want to tell us about Hastings? <laughs> Where did that come from? <laughs> eh? What? <laughs> yeah, Hastings. Yeah. It's, uh, it's alright, yeah. Um, <laughs> what's there? Not much. <laughs> it's just one of them Is there places. A beef? Yeah, yeah, it's got, I think that's what's good about it. Nobody knows, right? Because last weekend it was roasting and, and you saw pictures of Brighton mm. and it was heaving, yeah. right? Hastings, <laughs> hardly anyone there. And yeah, it's got a nice, nice little beach. Yeah. Um, sand? Sandy No, beach. pebbles. Well, right. that's all right, isn't it? You don't, well, no. you don't want the sand. Why do you want sand? It's, it's, it's a little bit, doesn't it? It's a murder bit. building a sand castle. No, no, you just, just sit there. Yeah, you can't walk on pebbles, can you? It's, you yeah. mean? Well, it's all kind of, it's sort of a bit, you know, ah, dodgy it's underfoot. All right. The only annoying thing is, right, <laughs> it's one of them places that it's great to visit for a day. Yeah. But I wonder how people who live there get by. Right. Why? Because all, all the shops are like them things that you go in and it's like a little pebble with a, <laughs> a pebble stuck on the top and it says Aistins on it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so every shop does that. If you want bread and milk, you... You don't it's, it's murder. Yeah. There, there must be a supermarket. I didn't see any. Seriously, it's all novelty things like that. Yeah. And then when yeah. I got back into London... Think <laughs> their houses. Yeah, yeah. Just covered in pebbles and, like, seashells yeah. and stuff. Oh, not rock for tea again. <laughs> <laughs> well, the funny thing is, right, it's, it's the first time I've sort of noticed somewhere like that, when you go, what do you do if you, you know, you just want some Brillo pads or whatever. I wa I'm walking in London... Never concern me, that. <laughs> Never needed Brillo pads in my life. No, but you know what I mean, the sort of things that... Yeah. It's a bit tricky to find, but in London, you know, you've got the coverage. Yeah. Now, the weird thing is, I was walking home from, we went had a drink the other night, right? Yeah. Walking down the road, and there was a shop that just sold, in London, just sold chess pieces. Yeah. Is that the one on Great Portland Street? Round the corner from it. Yeah. Yeah. But that's, I, I think that's well, mental. I remember being in Brighton once and seeing a shop, and all it sold was fo the foam you put inside cushions. Yeah, there's one of those up Pentonville Road. But I don't know who opens the shop. I, like know, that. I know where these I'd things are. A, there's a hole in the market. Yeah. What was that shop we walked past yesterday? And it was like some really, really. Oh, um, uh, chef uniform shop. <laughs> yeah. It's Dundee Street. Yeah. And I, I tell you what, I opened the chef uniform. Ma mainly sort of check trousers and white hats. <laughs> yeah. But there must be a lot of chefs around. <laughs> I'm eating all the time. Someone's making the food. Yeah. The, the funny thing is, on the chess shop, right, they mustn't yeah. have been doing that well. And someone must, you know, the businesses must, have, the bosses must have been sat there going, not really working this, is it? Yeah, right? people only buy one chess set yeah. in their life. <laughs> yes. Right. Yeah, but the funny thing is, on the door, it's just said, come in and browse. <laughs> Which I thought was odd. Did right? you? No, it was short. 
right? <laughs> but, the, but the funny thing is, the funny thing is, right, so you can imagine them sat there going, oh, not doing that well, and it's changed, they've actually changed the name of the shop now. Yeah. And now it says Chess, Chess and Bridge. Right, they've had to explain. So they've opened it up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But still. What do you buy for Bridge, if not I don't know. cards? The I don't know. I don't know, I don't play bridge, but I don't know, I don't think you need a lot of stuff for bridge except a pack of cards. I remember going at- uh, A table. When I was on- Three friends. On Go holiday on. once in Devon, past a shop. I don't know, if you ever need it, if you ever need an antique marionette, <laughs> <laughs> let me know, I know where there's a shop. <laughs> okay, yeah. Antique marionettes! I know. Again, you only need one, and this is a But I want to know who goes into this business. Well, son, what are you doing? Going to university to do law, father. Well. There's a factory there that makes the little plastic bits that goes on the end of chair legs. Do you want to take <laughs> yeah, it over from yeah. me? We're not really, no. It's all set up. Yeah. It's all set up. Oh, God. All right, Dad, but just for a couple of years. Uh, Someone's got to make them. Someone's I know. Make the little plastic bits that go on the end of chairs. Well, if you, uh, make them, call us on the <laughs> 1234-9734. Weird, though, innit? Weird. Weird, oh, yeah. though, innit? Right, listen, uh, Songs of Phrase answers next. We'll go uh, on the well, I'll tell you what, play it once more so that people have got a chance to actually enter. Hang on, keep if you talking, can't be keep bothered. Talking, keep talking. Oh, I can't be Should talking. be ready, Carl. This All is right. terrible. Here we go. From right. That is the well-known phrase, Daddy's never gonna stop robbing telephone box. <laughs> the well-known <laughs> phrase. And uh, we're looking for, uh, the songs, I think. I don't care. Right. Well, uh, Libertines on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve Merchant. Over there is Carl Cayman Pilkers. <laughs> right. I'd be great for heart. You really wouldn't would. I? You really Virgin, would. I'd probably, be, I'd probably be. But Radio 2 would be my first. Oh, all one. Late station. night one would be good. All good stations. All professional stations. Yeah. Four all weeks to go. Audience, Four weeks audience. to go. Before we may give up or we may come back. Yeah. Who knows? It's all up to Carl. Cayman Pilcoids. <laughs> <laughs> Can I uh, just extend an apology? Uh, it was a little bit crass earlier, and I made some unsavoury remarks about Radio One DJ Chris Moyles. I'd like to apologise. Funny man, funny man, Chris Moyles. I'd like to apologise for that, but uh, it gave me an idea. You, the listeners, who do you hate? <laughs> um, email in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I just think that we've never really used uh, XFM as a kind of, well, as a research tool, really, and it seems to me that we got we can get great opportunities. And it's this, we, we don't sort of do this thing, we don't go on there and sort of like slag off other people and, and people in the public eye. Well, we, we sort of, we pick on targets that, 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 that are- can't fight back. Helpless, the elderly, you know, people <laughs> suffering in some way that really, really, and particularly we don't want to pick on people like Chris Moles who's got a big platform, much exactly. bigger platform. We want people who can't answer back. Yeah, we want, we, yeah, so, um, who do you us, hate? That's us. Who do you hate? And we don't want, I don't want people you went to school with or your Do you boss. know what I hate, Steve? Who do you hate, Rick? Right, my top three, just in your top three, would be Hitler, yeah. Mussolini, and General Pinochet. Really? No, probably Moyles E. Harry Potter and Jamie Oliver. Nice. But what are your top three? No, don't make them comical, don't make them- these are the people that wind you up. When you see them on TV, if you hear them on the radio, if you see them in a magazine, they just- oh, they make your kind of blood boil. Might be us. It could be us. Well, I mean, uh, I'm you know, expecting we, that. We know that we- yeah, yeah, we're yeah. not stupid. We could take it as red that it's us. Yeah. And then if, if anyone like, yeah, Let's us. assume it's us, so we want other people. Yeah. yeah. But we just want- I want to drop the, the top lit, the top five people. I don't want to hear things like Tony Blair and Jeffrey Archer and fascism. No. Just people who make your flesh crawl for no for no fault of their own. Well, but really, well, sometimes their own. Because yeah, they're, they're, you know, yeah. They're talentless or fat. But that'd be good. But that'd be a good long long term poll when, over the next four weeks, and then, then in four weeks time we go, we go. Well, we're off. We're in the top ten. <laughs> exactly. But here are the other nine. So I, I think it's just genuinely going to be quite uh, quite interesting. So Ricky Dodgerface at xfm dot co dot uk. Maybe who you hate and why. It's like g giving a reason in the diary room. Yeah. That you got. You can't just nominate someone. You've got to say and why. Sure. But if you, you can't know. be bothered to write and why, just nominate. Yeah. Because that means just we've got a lot of reading to do if they start doing that, Rick. Yeah. Keep it down to one sentence. Yeah. You know, so, so, so the reason to be so and so because they can't walk. Something like that. Sure. Maybe. Now then, uh, we were playing earlier songs of phrase. Um, we have had. I mean, the, the, a the, the answers I could literally count on the fingers of one hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> now the right answer is even less so. But, um, do you want to play it once more, Carl? Oh, God. <laughs> From there was uh, <clears throat> seven songs in there. Right. Read them out, go on, what are they? It was, uh... Oh, have you ever got it written down? No, I can remember them. Daddy Cool. Right. Boney M. Boney M. Yeah. Uh, Never Gonna... Give you from up. Rick, Rick Astley. Astley. Yeah. 
Apparently. Um, Write them down! Stop, Sam Brown. Right. Uh, Robin was, uh, Miss Robinson by Sam and Garfunkel. Mrs. Robinson. Yeah. Uh, hang on a minute. That's not Robin. Oh. From, From Russia with Love, Matt Monroe. Right. Telephone. Telephone hanging on the telephone, Blondie. Right. And then Box. Living in a box. By living <laughs> in, a in a box. box. Well, listen, no, Brilliant. I don't think anyone got them all right. No. If you did get them all right, I'm sorry, but I gave up checking the emails a long, long time ago. <laughs> so, um, I'm gonna give it- I'm gonna give it to Michelle Flower, cause she got a few of them right. <laughs> <laughs> so well, well done, She Michelle. got a lot right, though, actually, yeah. well done. Good, well done. Uh, she got she five out of seven, so well done, Michelle. And, uh, you get all those great prizes. Incidentally, um, we mentioned that, uh, Stargate SG-1, I'm yeah. really look forward to that, Michelle. That yeah. features, uh, Richard Dean Anderson. Had a lot of emails, people saying, is that the same Richard Dean Anderson, or Dickie Anders, that used to email in and said he'd love the show. What's happened to Dickie Anderson? No, I've not heard from Dickie for ages. So, Dickie, if you're listening, Richard Anderson, if anyone knows Richard Anderson, what's happened to him? Well, I think we know he's top three. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, yeah, D uh, Dickie Anders, if you're in, if you're still out there, get in touch with Anders. 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 It was also, oi. Yeah. So, hey. Anders. I just was gonna say, you know you're talking about people who annoy you and that? Yeah. I, not many sort of celebrities annoy me because I think, well, some people like them. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Things that affect me, like the builders. Right? You're a builders, philosopher. Go on. The builders annoy me, right? Sure. Yeah. And you could say that's a bit of stereotyping, but all the people who have met who have been builders have always annoyed me, right? So that's I'd that's because they've been working on your house in your space. I mean, that's not that's like all the builders that have been round your flat and making a noise when you're trying to get some sleep have annoyed you. Hmm. Well, that brilliant. But also someone in the office in the week, right, who works there. Yeah. He's a good lad, named Lenny, right? He's yeah. called Lenny. Uh, he proposed to his missus yeah. using XFM. So well, like, he, he popped in, he popped in Zoe's show, right? His girlfriend sat out there, she didn't know what was going on, she was after coming. Even right? she wasn't listening, she was out there. <laughs> she, she, she probably had a Walkman on or something. Yeah. <laughs> but just, just that <laughs> she was just to Jono. <laughs> <laughs> he had yeah. to fax Jono with the request. <laughs> <laughs> Dear John, yeah. I'm broadcasting yeah. Mexico at the moment. Can oh my you ask my listening to you? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, London's hot one, a six point two. Right, come on. Um, right, educating Ricky. This is my favourite bit now. Uh, You're just going to tease us, aren't you, with three uh, headlines? If you and know. I'll choose one, and then we got the other two as well. Yeah, that's the way it works. And at the end of it, you learn some stuff. Like I say, I'm struggling a bit with 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 knowledge. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At last he confesses. <laughs> yeah. Go um, on. So the three headlines for you to pick from, we've got, um, first one, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> 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 I got a, I got a feeling there's some vegetables involved. <laughs> uh, yeah, right. go on. Maybe. Second one, um, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Okay. All right. All right. And, uh, third one, um, <laughs> I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me here. Oh, that one. I'll bake on in the morning, if you're sick of having me right, here. Right, I'm having that one. That's brilliant. Right, well, it's a saying. Do you know, um, cold shoulder? Giving someone the cold shoulder? Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, if you have someone round at your house, and, um, you know, you, you try to get rid of them, and they're hanging around and stuff, and you're like, oh, I wish, I wish they'd go, I'm tired and that. Well, years ago, um... When? Literally years ago. Well, ages ago. Sort of, uh, Olden times. I think it said medieval times. Yonks ago, then. Yonks ago. Yeah. <laughs> medieval, we, yeah. we, we're going back quite a bit on this Well, one. you know when you find out these books, why well, it just pop down when it was? Just make a note. I don't think it says all the time, it just sort of says, you know, a few years back. Yeah. Oh, no, right. no, it doesn't. Well, Never. Uh, alright, I'll make an effort next week. Okay. Right? So, oh, it's annoying that, because my girlfriend said to me, just make a note at the time and he'll stop having a go at you. Yeah. Yeah? And I kind of thought, oh, it, it's alright. Didn't, didn't listen. <laughs> I don't think it matters anyway in this one. We're looking at the saying, right? So yeah. it's giving someone a cold shoulder, shoulder, right? <laughs> and what it is, right, ages ago, uh, there wasn't <laughs> enough houses for people. Right. Because there wasn't much money being made, you know, there weren't big businesses, people weren't earning good money like they are now. So there wasn't as many houses, right? right. So what you what you ended up getting is like uh, you know the rich people having a nice place to live, oh. and the poor people were like wandering about, you know, looking for places to live and that. And what they ended up doing is, they had like uh, people would go round to the mate's house and say, "Look, I haven't got anywhere to live. 
it's a bit cold, can you let me stay, right? Mm. So they'd go, uh, well, all right, then you can stay a couple of days. But they ended up staying for, like, weeks, yeah. right? So, to sort of get rid of them, what they'd end up doing, they'd be making the dinner, and they'd, uh, be making a lovely dinner, like, a uh, bit of meat, nice warm meat, and, uh, nice veg, yeah. gravy, and This so happened every time, did it? <laughs> it <works. laughs> This is where the saying came from. <laughs> is this from. what happened, Rick? This, this is, is what happened. happened every time. It was in that vague book. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> the book of vague sayings and stuff. <laughs> yeah. Right, so, uh... So yeah, so they'd be making a nice meal, but what they did, they looked after all the family, but yeah. a person who won't go home, mm. they just give them some like, sort of a cut off of cold meat. Right. So they'd say, you're giving them the cold shoulder. Oh. Uh. Meaning. Right. <laughs> okay, that's, that's rubbish. Um, okay, uh, absolute. <laughs> Carl, no, why no, no, does no. that necessarily work? Yeah, yeah. Why is do, why, why do they always, in every situation when you want to get rid of a lodger, well, still feed him every day, but make the meat lukewarm. <laughs> so we They always to... leave then. Yeah. Oh, this food's lukewarm. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna become homeless and again, they go, wandering the streets. Are you giving me the cold shoulder? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Do you want me to leave? Yes, just say leaving. No, I like- <laughs> I like to do it cryptically. That way, in years to come, yeah. someone will have a little saying about it. Well, yeah, that- that was our bacon in the morning. Uh, yeah. If you've had enough of me, we'll leave that. Well, we'll-, we'll, we'll... <laughs> Oh, bacon <laughs> in the morning! Oh, bacon in the morning if you've had enough of me! <laughs> so, so uh, come back. What are the others? Just tease us again with the others. We'll come got, back to those. You've got, he's a bit of a nuisance. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> nice, looking forward to that. Look at the way when I went to school, there was two kids with them big heads. <laughs> now, you don't never see him. <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. no one else saw him anyway, Carl. It's only you that saw two of them, not related, and wouldn't hang around with each other because you think they thought it would be too obvious. <laughs> yeah. Webbed, webbed fingers and big heads. That's amazing. And there was a kid with a pigeon chest. So. Oh yeah, and the and the the lady with the head like a bag of spuds. Oh, Let's oh, not yeah, go through these again. It just that. raises too many questions that can't be answered. <laughs> Yeah. Right then. So, um, we've got, um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. Yeah, go okay. on. Is that the one you want? Let's yeah. go for it. Right, um, I think this was like round the 1700s. <laughs> <laughs> bluffing. Um, and. Just bluffing. But it's, it's Who was the king then? Don't know. Go on. But it's, uh, it's about the word bon bonfire, right? Bonfire. Bonfire. Yeah. Do you know where it comes from? No, go on. No. Right, what happened is it's got nothing to do with Guy Fawkes and that, which is what I thought when I saw it. It's got nothing to do with that. But ages ago, at 1700s, yeah. right, um, the, um, didn't have enough houses, like I mentioned. <laughs> okay. Yeah. yeah. So, if that happens, you get people living on the streets. Uh -huh. You get sure. diseases, people aren't like, cleaning properly. Yeah. So, you get more deaths. Mm -hmm. All right? Yeah. So, think about it. You've got all these dead bodies lying around. Uh, they're running out of space, because it's like, I don't know, don't know why they're running out of space. But, <laughs> okay. they haven't, they haven't got much, I don't know why, really. <laughs> I was gonna say, they should've just buried them, but, <laughs> yeah, there's probably more land back then than now. He doesn't need anyone else in the room. <laughs> to, uh, He's having to have a, a conversation dialogue. with himself. Yeah, yeah, we could leave and we'd come back and you go, I've sorted it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, anyway, for some reason, um, they, they presumably, if, it, if it's gonna be they burnt them, it's presumably to do to, to, that it also kills the parasite or, or whatever's carrying the parasite on them, as opposed to burying them and not killing the disease. Well, yeah. So that's, that, there you go, you've worked it out. They, they piled them up <laughs> and they turned it into a celebration because there was a lot of fed up people at that time. <laughs> Is this want... to be the word bond, meaning good? No, 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 I'll oh. tell you in a minute. Go on. So you've got all these people who are like going around and like, oh, you know, so-and-so died the other day, and, you know, nearly every week someone they knew was dying. Yeah. So you can imagine, like, just constant, like, being depressed. Mm. So, and they've got all these bodies lying everywhere. It's like, oh, God, what are we gonna <laughs> do? So they said, we're all too fed up at the moment. <laughs> said, let's, let's make this a better world. This was 1701 by the time they got <laughs> yeah, together. Yeah. So <laughs> they said, uh, what we need to do is, uh, have a big party. Mm. So mm. they said, yeah, yeah. Good thinking. See what you're thinking. So, um, they go, right, well, we'll put all the bodies yep. in a big pile, mm -hmm. and they're all diseased and that, so yep. they, set f they set fire to the bodies, mm -hmm. yep. and, they, and they said, let's ha have this as a celebration to remember them mm -hmm. by, and, you know, uh, we'll, we'll have a drink and that, and have a chat, we'll have this big fire going, 
and it came from bone fire. Ah, right. So it was, fire. it was, it was all the bones, bomb fire, it's, it's bone fire. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah? Yeah. That's interesting. So that's, that's how it came about. Yeah. In the 1700s. Yeah. That was? No, nah, probably, okay. I, I reckon it was 1600. Probably I, I, earlier. I probably reckon earlier. it was the plague. Mm. Mm. I reckon mm. it came from. But, uh, interesting stuff. Interesting yeah, stuff. Yeah, so that, that's, yeah. uh... Did you celebrate Bonfire Night? Is that a big celebration for you? No. Do you like the fireworks? So I'm sick of fireworks. I just think it's the, they're rubbish. It's yeah, like I'm, I, I'm, I'm not impressed. I've never been impressed by fireworks. No. Even as a kid, you know, you have to go to, like, sort of community kind of get gatherings with a bonfire and fireworks and yeah. some local vicar or whatever would come out and- But I also think the adults tedious. think the kids love it and yeah. they're- and, they, and if they just got together and said, should we go this year, they'd all go, no. Yeah, not absolutely. Go, let's not go yeah. this year. It, what would be better is if the vicar had <laughs> wheeled out like a massive rocket, yeah. climbed in, yeah. gone last <laughs> one to the moon is a bender, <laughs> and then fired himself <laughs> off. Now that, I'd pay to see. That's a firework <laughs> display I'd like to see. As <laughs> it is, it's just oh, rubbish. Oh dear. Yeah. Is that your feeling, Carl? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm not keen. No. Sorry, what, what, what clue was that? Um, we'll have a big fire tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Bone marrow. Bone, Bone marrow. <laughs> Genius. We've had, we've had a, a few emails. Uh, anyone got it right, Carl? Anyone um, got it right? Educating Ricky, Ricky, that's the final one. We've got to get that out of the way. We've got to get Rockbusters as well, though. We can do that at the end. We can win. Go on, then. Yeah, but we've only got five minutes left. Come on, just oh, do Educating Ricky. Ricky. Right. Oh, God. The, uh, the last one that we haven't done right. is, um, he's a bit of a nuisance. Go on, then. Um, again, not, not really, not really that interesting. Thanks. Um, no, like, again, I t spoke to you in the week, and he had much better things, like when I tell you about, Brian Blessed climbing Everest, and for some reason it made him, uh, it, uh played havoc with his belly and- What? He, he followed through and he had to clean up- he Shat himself? Using, yeah, using, um, using ice and stuff. Why are you tell- why are you telling me that Brian Blessed- what, what- in what way is telling me that Brian Blessed shit himself once in any way educational? Because I was saying how he- he- he was climbing Everest, right? Right. I'd give it to him, he's an actor and that, but he- he gave that a go. Yeah. Right, he played- What's the know, point of that, you'd say, wouldn't you? You'd say, God, he's, he's, you know, he's Oh, good. so he's alright. Uh, me, me doing a boxing match, there's no reason he's rubbish, but him climbing Everest and shitting himself- Yeah, he did is, that. Is commendable. Right, and he's only gonna, like, go and do it again. He's gonna climb it again. Yeah, but he might not shit himself this time. Yeah, what's the point in going? Nothing's changed up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good yeah, good been? Well, it has. They've probably, uh, they've well, probably cleared right. it up by now. Look at the All-Stars. The old, the old. So, can I just, I don't, don't want to criticise there, but if I was listening and I'd enjoyed that track and yeah. I wanted to know what it was, I wouldn't have understood what you just said. Really? Then. Could you just say that again? Low Fidelity All Stars. Yeah, Low Fidelity, because you went, Low Fidelity All Stars. I was doing all I was doing my DJ No, it's just you didn't know what your mouth wide I can't be bothered. No, sure. It's, it takes too much, look at that, listen to him crinchling his little, crinchling? Crinch, you're not crinchling, you're not crinchling your Jaffa cakes, are ya? He wasn't going out on air, no one knew. I bet you're one of those people in cinemas that think you're being really quiet eating a bag of crisps, aren't you? Do you go to cinemas? Mm, I haven't been for a bit, actually. What Tell do you do, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Carl! What's an entertaining evening for you? Yeah. What would you do to occupy your time? Uh, my... <laughs> your hobbies, for instance. <laughs> might, might get a video out from prime time. Right, what, 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 would you enjoy that or would it just be a chore for you? No, no, I think things like that. You really hate doing that. That's, that's when you really switch off and you forget all your problems and stuff. Why well, you haven't got any you problems? You haven't got any problems, Carl. You, you haven't don't know that. I put on a face when I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a mask. <laughs> you wear Are you me. crying inside? This Carl? is you being the happiest you can be. You're like a clown, aren't you? Oh. Do you it's... think I'm like a hard, miserable man? Because there was somebody else. I don't think you're hard. The other day, <laughs> and like I said to him, I can't watch the Elephant Man because it <laughs> upsets me. <laughs> You're the best! You don't know you're doing it, you're no, the best. Can you watch it? Um, well... I always, when it gets that bit where they're carrying him through the village and, and messing about with his head. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know, my, this is true, my dad watched that once, and we were watching it, my mum and my sister and that were all quite moved by it, almost really oh. tears, thinking it was a wonderful example of man's inhumanity to man and yeah, all that thing. Yeah. And my dad just went, wouldn't he make an amazing novelty rucksack? <laughs> And it, it cheapened the film for me, and, and I've never had this sort of Steve was thinking, he's not that ugly. <laughs> Blimey, here we go, we were laughing at <laughs> Carl! Can we focus on one person at a time, Rick, please? <laughs> Let's destroy him first. Oh, God. Tell him what you said to me when that record was playing about the Jaffa Cakes. He handed, he bought some Jaffa Cakes, which was lovely, he went across the road and he handed out the Jaffa Cakes, and then I went, oh, thanks very much. And then what did you say? 
I just remember learning at school. <laughs> um, I'm not like making fun of of the illness because it's not funny, but um, they cure cancer. <laughs> Jaffa cakes cure cancer. Not not like fully. Right. <laughs> they just go some way to helping. Yeah. Do you know? Um, it'll, it'll sort of help. If if you've got it, you can't say right. Get me a load of Jaffa cakes. Right. But I think it sort of puts a bit of a stop to it if you haven't got it. Do you know what I mean? It's like having vitamin tablets. Is this medically proven? Should we get Dr. Fox down here to confirm that? I can't. I can't. I actually can't cope. You're just play a record. Play a record. Can I just, if anyone has ever survived cancer thanks to Jaffa Cakes, please call in. No, but I didn't say that. And then he went, it's the orange thing in it. And then he read, he tried to read it. He said, I wonder if it's, and he tried to read out this scientific name. And it's an email only competition. Email only, uh, ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk and we pick a winner before the end. So, and the winner, and all that winner, wicker man. The weather. The best video. of the weather, weather. The best of the weather. <laughs> <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> the best of the weather. As a compilation, Channel yeah, 4. Exactly. That the winds be... like to vary. Uh, I, I, I love 1976 weather. Remember this weather. one from August 1979? Oh, it's warm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, this is warm, isn't it? <laughs> oh, the best of the weather. I'll tell you what. You remember how we always play, like, great music, mm. usually? Mm, mm, mm. I'm up you're in not it. You've not got another one, have you? You're yeah, I'm going to do it again. Yeah, 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 yeah. This is David Bowie driving Saturday. Oh, yeah, yeah. it again. <laughs> what? I'm uh, doing, oh, yeah, I'm in the same problem. I know, beating well, a biscuit. Yeah. Uh, David Bowie driving Saturday. Mm. That's a great track, isn't it? Mm. A crash course for the ravers, eh? That's what this show is, isn't it, Carl? Crash course for the ravers. They tune and they go, wow, that's, that's so cool. I wish I was like Carl Pilkington. You reckon? Yeah. Definitely. You forgot to uh, read your mum's clues out, didn't you? Yeah, she's, she's uh, just for fun only. This is Carl's mum. She uh, she listened one week and now she sends him a little example of uh, rockbusters every week. She's got. Um, what did she send? Um, this group would go well with your Christmas dinner. <laughs> Cranberries. Yeah. Um, they make a few good cupboards. They what? make a few good cupboards. Yeah. The carpenters. Uh, the the carpenters. carpenters. I was thinking of EMF. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, what else? I was thinking B and Q. The B and Q. Uh, this group thinks of lots of things. <laughs> this group thinks of lots of things. <laughs> yeah. Uh, go on. Imagination. <laughs> uh, I think they're the best ones. Yeah, no, well, they're, 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 they're the best ones. Obviously, we want the worst ones then. Uh, here's one more. Uh, she'd really like Blackpool. She'd really like Blackpool. She'd really well, like Blackpool. Fairground attraction. Not bad. Yeah. Not bad. Right, so, uh, there's, uh... Does uh, she write anything else in the letter, or does she just send them, like, <laughs> on a scrawled on the back of, you know, I don't know, a till receipt? She did with the first one, now it's just, just the rockbusters. Right. So, <laughs> really? She doesn't bother asking how you are, or... Well, I'll speak to her in a week. Right. On the phone, so yeah. Yeah. What kind of conversations right. would you have, then, with your What's What are you saying? Do you moan about how I've worked you are and stuff to her? Uh, uh, they're just, I mean, they're always surprised when I'm getting in late, and that, it's like, you know, what have you done today? Oh, I've just got in from work, and it's like half past eight at night. A lot of people get them at half eight, Carl. Next. Uh, yeah. You know, uh, just saying, how's the flat going? I was yeah. asking my dad some DIY tips the other day. Mm. Um, you know, usual sort of stuff mm. we talk with your mum and dad, mm. really. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. talking about the bisons with them. I was with watching, the uh, did you watch the mammals in the week? Oh, I David it. Attenborough? No. I was thinking, actually, right, all this MTV stuff, if there's one reason why I'd like to do it, yeah. is I was watching Attenborough, the, the mammals program. I reckon I could do something like that. Right. Right. And just have, have like me, <laughs> instead of acting, bro, like a young, you know, a young, sort of fresh person. Yeah. Uh, watching like, um, certain animals and saying, do we need these? <laughs> do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh, God! What's going on death on earth? That's, that's amazing! Yeah. Do we need these? And, no, uh, and, the, and the audience at home would vote, <laughs> would there be something like a telephone yeah, like vote? out system. Oh, yeah. The that. thing is, it's, yeah. like, I, it's something interesting that Amber was saying the other night <laughs> on, uh, <laughs> Do we need these? on Jonathan Ross's show, on his telly show, right? He was saying, uh, he said, you could take all the humans off the earth and it would carry on. But take, like, some animals off it and mammals and that. 
you've got problems on your hands. Mm. I thought that was quite interesting. Yeah. So it's like the question is, do we need these? Is that part of the big thing? Right. Like jellyfish. Yeah. We've talked about jellyfish. Yeah. Yeah. So which mammals in particular were you, you talked about? Like bull show, haven't you? Hey. <laughs> which mammals uh, were you thinking we don't need when you watched the show the other night? Um. Any in particular that you thought they don't need them? They're not of interest. Well, I like I like whales, but I don't know what they do. Uh, uh, and okay. they're, they're taking up quite a lot of room. Sure. Um, <laughs> but stuff like, quite a lot of room. Yeah. But like, um, jellyfish, <laughs> I looked into because, yeah, you know, well, what I was I talking about them. Yeah. And, um, they were saying they've got no eyes, no art, <laughs> uh, they're something like 97% water. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they're blind and they do about 33 miles a day. Right. So it's like, do we need them? Could we Pointless. clear them out? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, a big net. That would, that would be the, like the program. What, what, right, we'll get rid of them. Uh, next week we'll be looking at, uh, <laughs> Linos. <laughs> I think it's like, genius. Yeah. Honestly, I think it's genius. And like going along sort of like picking up sea enemies and going and just lobbing them into the sea. Well, what do you think about MTV doing that? And then I, I just, in between the bits, play music really? I play music to related relate to, to fish. So I could play like fish. Yeah. That rock guy. Or, uh, the rock, animals. Rock lobster. Yeah. Or, uh, yeah. what else could this we get could in run there? and run. What, what other songs have got animals in them? The well, monkeys? Could play the monkeys? Yeah, there's about a million, so let's not start this. No, yeah. but, yeah. do you know yeah. what I mean? So, 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 but, so, do we need this? So MTV Carpen. flies you around the world <laughs> and to the most incredible exotic locations. You sort of climb up a tree or whatever and next to, I don't know what lives up a tree, some kind of rare parrot. <laughs> you say, slow. look at that, it's colourful, slow. it's interesting. Oh, you like slow, so don't you? No, they just live up trees, but I'd say, do we need them? Mm. Why? Well, what do they do? What do you mean, what do they do? What do you want from an animal? Carpentry? What well, do like, you want? I don't, I don't like scorpions, right? Right. But then I found out they look after those, uh, those monkey things. They're not monkeys, they're whatever. lizards! Well, all right, yeah, then lizards, they look after the lizards. <laughs> look so yeah. there's a reason. But, but do you need the lizard? Could be well, your next yeah, question. because the local people made shoes out of them. But not when the scorpion protected them, they didn't. All right, we don't need them then. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> So, and so ultimately, you, would anyone decide, I mean, do the animals kind of get a chance to mount a case for their survival? I mean, is there maybe someone that comes into their yeah, corner yeah, and sort of defends I'd have, I'd have like a David Attenborough type character who says, right. well, they do this, and I'll go, yeah, but do we need that, do we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So, yeah. And so what, what does an animal need to do in order for you to feel that it sort of gets the chance of life? I mean, like a pet, like an animal, like a dog maybe, or a cat, I mean, they give a certain affection to its owner. Is that a valid, uh, reason to survive? Not particularly. Uh, not really. No, okay. I've been saying that though, blind people use dogs, so they are useful. So dogs are useful. Farmers Farmers use dogs. dogs and save people, don't they, in yeah. snowy weather? Cats. <sighs> I'd have to think about it. Okay. Keep the mice down. Yeah, but mm. you've got rent to kill. Okay. So what I'm saying is, <laughs> uh, what I'm saying is something that will affect the world. Right. I think you'll find everything does. I think you'll find everything does. Mm. Except Carl. <laughs> 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 I'm not sure what effect he's having on the world. I tell you what, though, Steve. Right? Did you watch the mammals? I didn't see the mammals. They had uh, they had bison on it. Right. The weirdest looking things you've ever seen. Yeah. They've really again. Got you're on dangerous ground no, no, here, no, no, Carl. But they've really got. A, <laughs> it's like decide what you want to look like. Okay. It's just a mismatch of stuff. It's got a really big airy head. Yeah. Um. And like you, sort of bald at the back. Right. <laughs> Uh, sort of it's like someone you went to school with. <laughs> <laughs> Was there two of them? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> from the album Original Pirate Material, it's obviously The Streets and uh, an album track from that, It's Too Late. Fantastic, isn't it? Yeah. I know everyone's raving about it being, you know, one of the albums of the year, but it, it is, I think. It's great. That's brilliant. I love, love the backing as well. Mm. It's just so good. The, the, the lyrics, the things you go, I don't, oh, they're my favourite band of the year. Um, next week then. We'll do all our favourite songs of the year, shall we? No, I think it's got to be two weeks, Tom. Oh, two weeks, is it? Yeah, we'll I'm do away Christmas. next week as well. What do you mean you're away next week? What are you doing? Is there a bull show? I'm going, going up north again. Why? So Claire's going to be here with you. Okay. Yeah, right. at least she- What are you doing up north? She does her job. Just, uh, Suzanne's dad's birthday, uh, so. I bet he's a party animal. I bet I've heard that they really kick off, don't they? <laughs> is it, yeah, no, mentally? No. So, are you going to be raving? Can't concentrate now. <laughs> Oh, and he's all stressed because the lady from MTV is here. She's going to film his little face. So the what? Things, the things he said in the week. He was so worried. He's got worried about the spot on his head. That won't come out. Just that's got your best side. It's on that side. That's all right. All right. <laughs> yeah. The camera's out. Look, he's getting nervous now. Okay, Carl. Ignore the camera. 
okay? Just ignore the camera, okay? Now, me and Steve have done our research for you, and we've got two amazing things to tell you. Uh, what should I tell them first, about the baby or the... Well, they're both equally fascinating, so you, you choose. Um, I'll tell you the crab thing first, right? Um, we, uh, Steve actually saw this thing in the Guardian the week, uh, about our research thing, and then we looked it up, we looked into it on Friday, and it is incredible. Right, listen to this. There's a, a thing in, um, um, in a bay in, um, uh, New England, right, where it's, it's like the biggest, um, uh, they make silicon chips and stuff for computers, right? And because of the data protection thing, after they've d done them, because uh, they have to destroy the plates, Right, well the information's sort of put onto them. But there's still flakes of silicon, they sort of grind it down straight away. And some of the flakes got into the bay, okay. But some of the information's still on the, even the slight granules of silicon. Anyway, gets in the water. And silicon is rather like, um, a, a carbon derivative. I reckon if there'd been life on another planet that wasn't carbon based, it'd be silicon based. Because mm -hmm. that's simple sugars and products, it's just COH and that, and it can work with silicon, right? Anyway, the crabs have been taken up, it's put on the water, and they, they looked out on the beach, and, uh, over years the crabs have started, um, sort of putting themselves in formations, like geometric format, and they couldn't work out why they were doing this. And, uh, when they, put them in the experiment, they sort of like chopped them up and they found they'd taken on silicon. And it had sort of got into their brain and they were downloading information. They actually, they picked up little things because it's just chemical, um, you know, like uh, electrical impulses had got information off the silicon chip and they were interfacing it. But, this is the amazing thing, one bloke sort of thought of this and he thought, well, if, if it's a simple computer, the brain, if it's just a simple sort of electrical thing, then maybe there's, there's sort of, uh, you know, we could, we could get it down. So w what they did is they made a thing called a bio-interface. And they d put it into the crab's brain, just a really simple brain, so it's measured on Vangar, right? And it got impulses from it, and they were getting, like, computer readers, so just flashes of, like, symbols and geometric things, right, on this screen to read the crowd's brain, and it was stuff like, you know, fragments of a, um, what, what made them do this in the first place? Because they saw that, they saw the crowds behaving differently. They were behaving differently to each other. They were just like, they were, you know, intelligent. And they were sort of solving problems and all this sort of stuff. Anyway, when they downloaded the, the thing, it was like a, there was, um, uh, they found us, they were so fast, they found a, one of the secretary's names where it had been on the silicon chip, where it was just a, like a flash of a computer screen. <coughs> but the most amazing thing is, they downloaded a memory, right, it was like a, like a snapshot where it had been burnt onto the retina of the crab, just a snapshot or something, and it was like a picture of the beach, like a couple of years ago, right? And they also did, uh, incredible, it was like a, just a, a digital black and white sort of thing, so they could see what the crab had seen. Amazing. Jeez. Amazing. So Intelligent what, what, crabs. What, what are they doing with well, them now? Well, they think, this is the, this is the upshot, they think they could use it as spy crabs, because they could put these, get these crabs. Also, also, the other thing is, as generations went on, right, so they put a crab in the, the sea or something, right, uh, lots of crabs in, and then as generations went on, a, a newborn crab, they downloaded the memory, and it had the memories of it's great, 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 all together. It had every memory that any crab had been related to it beforehand. Because it passed it on, it just passed it on. So not even ones that had been eating the, the silicon stuff? Yeah. No, that these, they- These are just like ones that have had kids. Yeah. yeah. And they've got like- And they know every, so you'd know everything your great, great, everything right the way back. So would that work if, if we ate silicon? Well, I suppose so. So what are they gonna- well, they can use them for all sorts of things, though. I mean, that's that's what's incredible. I mean, I don't know, I don't know how you train it particularly. I don't know, it'd be quite tricky to train, but I'm assuming if they can, if they can, if they can do it that way, then presumably they can it'd give be it like certain loads. silicon information, which yeah. they can then plant in it, if you like, within it, within its sort of food. Also, if you get them onto enemy you beaches, it, yeah. you'd have like a thousand digital cameras just yeah, well, taking around. They, they, if you get like you know Osama bin Laden or someone, they just don't, calling they don't the understand the information they've got. No, they do. They're doing it. They just download them. So they're you could torture them, and they won't be able to sort of the information because they wouldn't know what the information they had because they're just but like the crab, the crab, the crab, the first crab they downloaded, they just kept seeing the same picture of a big crab feeding it, which they <laughs> really, yeah, wow, that's what like its mother crab was, yeah, it was memories of it as a child. 
But they're not in colour, presumably. Because no, they're all in black and white. Black and white. It's just a digital camera because it's just a, they don't see in black and white. So it's just like a, it's just like a, I don't know. I think it's, it's, I think it's burnt onto the retina or something. And um, the only one that they kept were the ones they saw a lot of the time. Well, I mean, in a way, uh, some of the educating Ricky I've got for you today is, is on the similar lines. Right. Oh, you've uh, got well, to be impressed by that. You've got to no, be impressed no, no, by that. No, no, that's pretty good. I mean, I'd, li I'd I'm interested to see, you know, what, what they do. What with they it. do, what they do with the, what the crab developments are. But yeah, yeah, no, that's that's pr that's pretty good. Yeah. But I mean, amazing. Yeah. Amazing. That's my favourite one I've ever done. It's great, isn't it? Yeah, yeah really, really good. good. Mm. Yeah. Because I always had a problem with Gomez before because it always sounded like they were trying to sound like these world-weary Tom Waits style gravelly voice guys. And they were 20. And they were like 14, yeah. Yeah, but I mean, that that's great. That's really good. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, no, well, it's well done, boys. Yeah, well done. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look at your face. Give it a thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Can I play an Elvis Costello track? You know, I'd love to bloody hear some Elvis Costello. I was saying that. Well, you know why? Because we met him and he's a lovely man. We did meet him, yeah. And uh, I just, wish him to show off. I remembered all the great songs he's ever done. I didn't like his spoken word much too, you know, too mm, much. Mm. And uh, some of his later projects I thought were a little bit. But his own songs from, you know, 1978 to about 1980, I thought were great. Well, why did we meet him? I can't just remember why we met him, Rick. Oh, can't, I, I wasn't. Remember. Well, I wasn't doing that. No, I, I can't remember. We won an award. Was it because we won another bloody award? <laughs> oh, stop I, giving us awards, please. Oh God! Oh, oh I've got enough room in my house. Oh dear, we've only got two. Yeah, we just and we haven't two. got one of those. That one was the BBC, so he's got a lot of room in his house. And I've got the other one. He let me have it, so he's got no award in his house at all. Can I? Um, <laughs> you can borrow it. Can I? I don't know. If you, I don't know who you're talking to. Someone. I spoke to Richard Wilson from uh, One Foot in the Grave. I, I spoke to him. Yeah, but he's a lovely he, bloke. He's yeah. Go, but he said to me, uh, he said, uh, could you, could, could I, uh, do a cameo in the office for £40,000? <laughs> and I went, could, like, Ricky do, like, an amusing pratfall or something? And then you just come in as a cleaner and go, I don't believe it. And he looked at me like, like, why have you said that? Why oh have you brought no. that up? It was, I felt so guilty. Oh no. I, was, I, so, I so wanted to apologise. But why is it this? Uh, we know it's wrong to I do don't that. know why I said it. We, I don't we know. know why do, I said do, it. Do, we, do we think, no, it's different for me? Exactly. Because we're mate, in the business. I'll do a new twist on yeah. I don't believe it. And he'll go, you know, that's the best <laughs> I don't believe <laughs> it twist Comment, I've, I've heard. ever heard. I don't know what I was oh. thinking. Why did you? I was oh, so you didn't tell me that. I know, I felt ashamed. I felt really ashamed. Oh no. I was a little bit drunk. I wasn't thinking straight. Oh, it was so no. embarrassing. I was talking to a friend of mine who said, uh, who was it? I can't remember, was it? He said that he was watching a new, it was, um, it was a sports cast, but it may have been, uh, um, Formula One racing or something like that. And he was watching, and there was a commentator, and he's, you know, the commentators have got to keep talking all the time. Yeah. And he was going, and there's, uh, there's, there's, there's the, uh, team there. Oh, it's good to see so and so's girlfriend in the audience. And uh, he said he saw, and it cut to Richard Wilson in the audience, and he went, and the bloke went, and there's one foot in the grave. <laughs> He knew he had to say it then, but he couldn't oh. just name all the characters. Oh, that's fantastic! And there's one foot in the <laughs> Oh, dear. That'd be brilliant. And there's the office. I don't... <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> what you're you're putting us alongside one foot in the grave thing that's been going like ten years and one all this. What you're you're putting us alongside it beat us, Steve. Get over it. It <laughs> beat us in the comedy awards. No, I was just saying that you're an identifiable face if you're at a Formula One event. You okay. know, old. <laughs> Grumpy. One foot in the grave. Yeah, one foot in the grave, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, Carl, any thoughts before we move on? On anything we've said so far? Elvis Costello. Well, I'd like to play, um, Red Shoes. Are we not ready yet, for- Not yet, I'm just saying. What? Do you what? know who his dad is? Declas McManus. No, Declas Mc- I don't know his real Declan name. Declan McManus. He was a big band leader in the 50s or something, wasn't he? No, he was in the R. White's Lemonade ad. Yeah. Oh! Was he? Oh, oh, no, it's so much, there's so much to do with that. Good, so we're catering there to the, uh, audience listening who are 50 and above. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't, and I'm the target audience. I'm a secret lemonade drinker. Ah, oh. whites, ah, whites lemonade. You must remember that. Never heard that. Oh, those, those chimps that drink tea. Oh. Once, right, in school, um, we had a French dictionary, and you know, um, ice cold co co coke on the back of my throat. Singing hello summertime, it's the real thing. Remember that? No. Oh, you were there. We translated that into French. <laughs> <laughs> Is that the end of that story? Yeah. That's the end of the story. <laughs> yeah. But I know it in French. Do it. 
But it doesn't make sense. We just literally did the word. Go on, let me word, word. I can't believe you it, remember it, this. Tres fois, coke, sur le derrière, a mon gosh, chante, bonjour, estival, jump, celebrate. That's the only French you know, isn't it? <laughs> it's not even French. We just did it word for word. It doesn't make any sense. Can you say another word of French? Le, can you quote le Shakespeare? De ma tante. Can you, can you, can you quote answer. anything else? Is there anything else you can quote other than that? Is there anything else you learned at school that you can remember word for word? No. Nothing. Le chat est sur le mur. I don't just mean French, I mean anything. English, maybe some, a, a what bit do of poetry you that you can remember. Of course I can, yeah. Go on, quote a bit of poetry for me. Um, like what? Don't whatever soft, you remember. What light through on the window breaks, it is the east and Juliet is the sun, the rise west sun and kill the envious moon, it was already six as well. Anyway. Well, what doesn't do you want? really count. What? Shakespeare doesn't count? No, because that's the right, everyone knows that one. Oh, going what then? What should I know? The Wind Hover by Gerald Manley Hopkins. <laughs> Oh, you can do that one. I caught this morning's morning minion, Kingdom of Daylight, still thinking of Dawn Falcon and his riding of the Hold on, no, no, we haven't done Carl yet. Wait a minute, K-Man. Anything you can remember from school that you learned, that you had to maybe, uh, memorize? French. French. Not necessarily French, you could <laughs> Anything, be. anything you can remember. This can be anything you remember from school, apart from the orange stuff stops cancer. Yeah. It, it's not the cough that carries you off, it's the <laughs> cough in the carry you off in. <laughs> <laughs> Beatles, Revolution. Mm -hmm. Was that clear? Yes, it was. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Good. We've got to speed this up because we're, we know. It's funny because our first link when we had to go at like the, the library and the, the playlist, when we played the record, Carl went, you usually do it at the end when you've run out of stuff. Yes. What so, stuff off, yeah. so we started with what's usually our worst bit of material. So I think we've got <coughs> to do, turn this show round. Right. Uh, Carl's been holding this together, to be honest. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's Carl's. Beautiful naivety and, can I say it, Carl, in the nicest way, stupidity <laughs> yes. that are keeping the listeners no, together. I wouldn't class it as stupid. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, I'm only joking. Stuff. I'm only joking, mate. Of course you're not stupid. Everyone knows you're not stupid. You're sincere and, and that and that can sometimes be, you know, it's frowned upon in this cynical world. Would uh, you say you've learned stuff from me in the past few weeks? Definitely. That's definitely, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Rather like a scientist learns from a... Like a injecting mice. Yeah. No, but I've learnt from you about ants and stuff. I, th I think every week, as weeks go go on, I feel like we're you know, learning from each other. I'm learning more now than I did when I was at school. And can I just clarify? Yeah. You you weren't raised as an experiment, and you've escaped from a laboratory. <laughs> you are. You had regular upbringing in Manchester, and that. Yeah, I, I didn't. I didn't go to school much because me mum and dad had a caravan. <laughs> right. And no need, is there? <laughs> no need when you've got that sort of fun at home. Yeah. I used to just go away for weeks. Really? Yeah. Is that true? Yeah, honestly. Where'd you used to go? Port Maddock. But <laughs> <laughs> And, um, so you didn't go to school much? No, I, I did, but not as much as everyone else. No. Yeah. How many holidays were your parents having? Oh, what, what, what was their income that they could... No, well, my dad used to work nights, and uh, he used to travel back, because to Manchester from Wales, it wasn't that far. And Manchester he used to, do, to Wales? He used to do four on and four off, so <laughs> me and my mum were, like, loving it. But what, what's, what, what, Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port Maddock. Just down the road from Port Merion, where they filmed The Prisoner. Right. Oh, so, so that, that's cleared up for me. <laughs> yeah, location-wise. So what did you do then? You, you were in this little two-birth caravan on the back of a Cortina estate. Right. Well, what was it? What was the car? I want the, uh, what was Granada, it? Granada. Four Granada. Four Granada. What are we talking? 1980? Yeah, 82, 83, 84, right. 85. Okay. And you in, in the car, down there, down there, <laughs> park up. Yeah. What was it? What, what was Port Meredith? Port Maddock. Port, Port Maddock. Maddock. I remember Ruth. It's just, oh, yeah. Uh, it's just a holiday camp. Yeah. And at an arcade and a beach. I was, I was loving it. Yeah. But, um, so, so of the 52 weeks of the year, let's assume, I don't know how many weeks you take off normally for holidays anyway, let's just say, I don't know, you go to school 45 weeks of the year maybe? Generally, most kids? No. Nah. bit less. A bit less than that? 42, how right? many weeks would you say you actually spent in school? Well, how many weeks do you have off for summer? Well, we just we'll work that out. That's what about we six off for summer, six about four, three for Easter, about three for Christmas. Put it this way, I'm surprised I'm not Welsh, to be honest. Right. So I was there more than was in Manchester. Did I they think. not? Did the school authority not come and check you no, out? No, they didn't. Didn't get Manchester, I suppose. They didn't care, did they? Not really. Yeah. They're lucky you yeah. turned up at all. Why did you just turn up for the last day when you could take in your best toy? <laughs> <laughs> did you know that when you could take in any I game? Just, just play with everyone else's. Why, why you know, I break my stuff. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. No, cool. it's good well, this point. answers a lot. This does answer a lot. The fact that you spent most of your time on the beach as a kid. 
Teachers were no good at my school. We were right. talking about it yesterday. About so you were teaching them a lesson by going <laughs> off in the summer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> anyway. And uh, did you go to university? No. No, 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 no. Did you go to sixth form or college? No. When, when did you leave school? When I was about 15. Right. What, you just went on holiday and didn't come back? <laughs> <laughs> I just got a job early, didn't I? Cause I Where was it? Port Maddox? Get in there. No, I was a printer. BM print, print in Trafford Park. Well, yeah. that's great. That's a little interview little, there. Yeah, a little, uh, little ne story Next, there. I'll be interviewing Steve Merchant. What are we playing next? Bit of elbow. Oh, I, oh this is fantastic. This is elbow. Elbow, Asleep in the Back. I, I think that is absolutely beautiful. I think Elbow are my favourite new group. We've sang their praises many times and they've never phoned to thank us. Should they? Yes. Do they? Annoying. Really? Annoying. No, they're, they're doing a good job there. I wonder if they found their lyrics. Because oh, I also wanted to write a song from them, didn't I? They didn't, they didn't take me up on that either, Steve. I'm not sure I'm so keen on them, though. <laughs> Carl, can yeah. I have a Jaffa cake? Because I've just found a lump. <laughs> <laughs> I think, you Thank don't you. mean me, do you? No, no, no. no. All no, right, no. good. Thanks, um, Steve. Now, we interviewed Carl there. We've, I think we've learnt a little bit more about Carl there. We did, yeah. Um, and uh, I'm going to interview Steve now, um, Carl, right. because I used to be... you concentrating. Mm. Don't put it all in at once. Carl, chew. Chew before you swallow. Careful. Um, all right. Um, I used to suffer with that a lot. What? what? Not chewing. The amount of times I nearly died as a kid. <coughs> what? Forgetting to chew. Choking. Sure. Mint Imperials. Mm. My, mum, my mum stopped talking. <laughs> <laughs> Drinking them with water. <laughs> She's off to hide them. Oh. <laughs> he's coming out of his shower, isn't he? He's yeah. happy Saturdays. He's miserable all week and he's happy Saturdays, isn't he? Oh, look at him. It's <laughs> like we get him weekends. Yeah, yeah. And he's just happy because we sort of spoil him, don't we? And he has Jaffa <laughs> cakes and everything. We let him and on the radio. And live with his stepmom again, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. The ones who listen. Oh, what do you say? really? Yeah. Your girlfriend does, doesn't she? I imagine she's been away for ages. I know. I imagine she just switches off after a while. But you know, you know, we, you know, we love you, don't you? you know, we're excited. We talk about you in the week, and we, you know, we think you're great. So don't just think we're using you as a cheap a... comedy material. <laughs> <laughs> I hate you to think that. Carl. <laughs> right. No, I'm going to interview Steve. You know, because I used to be a chat show host. Well, I am a chat show host. <laughs> well. Well, did you see me at Ricky Gervais? <laughs> no. <laughs> I worked on it and I didn't watch it. No <laughs> one watched true, it. That's true, that's terrible. I no it. one watched What do you think, Carl? I loved it. See? Yeah. Are you thinking of Parkinson? And I didn't know Ricky then, so I'm being fair. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm going to interview Steve Merchant now. Okay. Live on our XFM 104.9. We should say that more often. Yes. Cause Ricky people, Gervais. Because they might tune and I think they've got a hospital radio by <laughs> mistake. Um, yeah, Ricky Gervais. Yeah. Okay, um, Steve Merchant. <laughs> Great to be here. Hi. Now, um... Uh, you're a very tall man, if yes. I might say. You're six foot seven, aren't you? Yes. Was that a bit of a problem at school? Uh, well, yeah, a few few jokes here and there. Yeah, a bit of gentle ribbing, but not yeah. really too problematic. What's the weather like up there? Well, exactly. No. Yeah, skinny, all that sort of. <laughs> oh, you're lanky. Yeah, oh, dear. Sort of and, uh, that, but, yeah. uh, uh, what about the glasses? Well, I wear glasses, but again, that wasn't really a problem, you know. They didn't call you four eyes, no, really. They didn't call you four eyes, freaky lank no, thing. They didn't call you freak pot. Freaky the freakish All right, I'm gimp, not sure I'm four eyes gimp. Mixed. Oh, what? Well, I'm, not sure well, I'm just I'm saying, they didn't do that. As an interview, I'm not sure that's the best approach. Okay, okay. And then you I'm left honest. school. You left school. Yeah. You went to university. Mm. There were you called freaky, no, freak eyed, four eyed git. Are you sure? Never been called it. Were you called freaky, lanky, four eyed, stupid hair, um, boggle eyed, freak face, fish face? Is your chat show coming back? <laughs> is this what you s- I never watched it, is this what you said to people like- I mean you had some big names on there, didn't you? Tony Hart. Yeah. That bloke off Ground Force. <laughs> <laughs> well the problem was they'd either heard of me, or they hadn't. Either way, <laughs> either they didn't way, wanna- It was a problem. Yeah, it was a- it was a- it was a, it was a problem. Who would you say was the biggest name you had? Uh, they're all dead now. <laughs> okay. Um, probably the youngest one. Uh, survived. I think Penny Smith is still with us. Right. Yeah. yeah. Um, biggest name? You had oh. Savile. Jimmy you? Savile. You had I Daniels, thought. Paul. Yeah, Paul Daniels, yeah. 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 <laughs> um, and, but which was the biggest name would you say that you had on the show from the 1970s? <laughs> Peter Purvis. Peter Purvis, of course. <laughs> he was yeah. a joy. No, yeah. but, um. So that's just. But it's not coming back though, that show. We're not. It, 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 no, not, not, not in that form. They, the Channel 4 wanted to see some changes. What sort of changes? Ratings. <laughs> right. Now I'm going to play a lovely uh, track. Thanks, Steve Merchant. Thank you. Um, uh, I'm gonna play a love trailer by Elvis Costello. I think one of his first hits, maybe even be his first hit back, back in the 70s. Um, this is, uh, Red Shoes. 
Oh, chimpanzee that, Monkey News Extra. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right, uh, another phrase, we've been talking about phrases today. Yeah, we have, Don't yeah. teach your granny when she's shaving. Yeah. Uh, don't teach your granny to suck eggs. Yeah. Uh, don't look horse in the mouth. Yeah. Don't let the chimp answer the door if you're chucking your cock in. <laughs> um, familiar with the phrase monkey business? <laughs> <laughs> no, I've never heard that one before, Carl. That's brilliant. Right, well, it came about, this has been emailed in and I haven't really had a chance to look at it, so I'm just weighing it up now. Um, <laughs> oh, God. Yeah. This yeah, is the biggest yeah, shambles yeah. on air, isn't it, really? Mm -hmm. oh, I'm ashamed of it. it. I mean, what was Dr. Fox? Mm -hmm. Dr. Fox must have been really polite. He must have been thinking, I don't know how to put this. Mm. He, he, I, he must have wanted to scream and go, you shouldn't be in the radio authority. My parents listen online, I can't look them in the eye. <laughs> <laughs> right, I think I've weighed it up. <laughs> Um, <laughs> long time ago, right? Yeah. In the, uh, Old days, yeah. Go in on. the Amazon jungle. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Little family of monkeys in there. Mm-hmm. Right? Having a good life. Good. Right? Didn't have any predators in there. Right? So, they were loving it. Yeah. They had a load of food around them, they had loads of banana trees. Yeah. Right? Mm, um, no, I don't think so. <laughs> no, they did. Sorry, I just, yeah. Everything's going great, so, they're happy in that. They go out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Wake up in the morning, load of bananas gone. Ooh, hang on, interesting. Hold on, wait a minute. So, Amazon- Either your dad's been around, or- Is it- this isn't the great Amazon banana robbery, is it? So anyway, turns out, it was another load of monkeys from another part of the island. From the rough bit. From the rough bit! From the rough bit! I love it! Like, they went into a middle class area. Oh, oh the ones is... with the earrings and the leather jackets. <laughs> oh, that is brilliant! <laughs> from a rough part of the island! <laughs> so, the monkeys thought, well, there's no point getting into a fight with them because they're harder than we are. Yeah. yeah. Of course, and they carry chains. So... <laughs> I love all this conjecture! They've got flip knives and this tattoos. Go... Yeah, go on. So, basically, they said, let's do some business with the bananas. Let's do some business with the bananas? <laughs> Let's do business right. with the bananas. Yeah. So, they said, well, rather than them coming robbing them, we'll, we'll flog them. <laughs> so, that got a stop to it then. The people, the monkeys came, they didn't have money. They said, give us some, you know, give us some bananas. Um, and it says, uh, So what, they exchanged bananas for bananas? For, for, for berries and nuts. <laughs> so that's where the phrase monkey business no, no, it's comes not. from. A little business no. to set up. Right, there, oh God, that's the end of that as well, so that's the end, that is a shame, that's the end of Rockbusters and Monkey News. Well done, you've done it in one show. <laughs>Steve Merchant, Carl Pilkington. Um, I walk uh, down Oxford Street 
every day to go to the office. And it is like running the gauntlet in exactly. Gladiator. It's- not only is it just like, you know, you have to dodge people and they're dawdling or rushing or, you know, keeping into the road to get past some people but avoiding taxes, but it's like hands everywhere, like leaflets. I don't know- there must be a million leaflets mm. given out. It's all- Mobile phones, teach, sandwich uh, shops. Uh, teach yourself English. Yep. Uh, teach other people English. And, I know, and- and the, those, uh, charity people, it, um, some of the Alzheimer's, and I- I've been caught about six times where I couldn't say no. I've got about- Eight standing orders now because I just couldn't say no when they confront you. Yes. Which is, you know, I'm all, it's amazing how often I'm on the way to a meeting. <laughs> yeah, I'm always yeah. on the way to a meeting, and then I always feel guilty if I walk past them again two minutes later with a HMV bag. Yeah, yeah, st full. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> crammed with bargains. I know, yeah. No, but, it's, um, it's actually weird. It's, they're like zombies. It's like you're fighting them off. You need a flaming torch. Yeah. To pass them. Or if it's not them, it's tourists. Just constantly, you know. Excuse me, can you take my photo outside HMV or outside Topshop? That doesn't happen to me. Oh, right? okay. I always think of tourists. Just in I the way, walk, just I, kind of dawdling, you know, but looking I walk at the so buildings. fast. I walk so fast. I put my head down and I just try and walk so fast mm. everywhere now. Because it's just, yeah. But mm. Oxford Street is just. It's unbelievable now. And I've, I, I think it's AIDS that I've started noticing. Even if the window's open and I hear just like cars and they're on the mobile phone, it's the loudest place in the world. Yeah. I don't know what we can do. But isn't it one of the busiest streets in. Is it either the world? The or universe? It's, it is meant I think if we carpeted it. That and put some curtains up. It was just dead and- it's like pubs with those- those polished floors and metal tables. And everyone's, um, having to talk like that to yeah. be heard. The jukebox is quite loud and I wanna go, t just t turn everything down. Yeah. yeah. Let's put some carpet down, just talk, talk quietly like this. Yeah. Put the music down a little bit. We'll have a good time. I've never quite understood that impulse. I don't, again, if it's age, where you go in a club or, or, a, or a pub, as you say, and the music's just slightly too loud. So it just makes everything slightly tricky. It's slightly tricky to have a I conversation. Know. But what, what annoys me is, is when it's for the amusement of the barman or barmaid. Yeah. If they're bored, they're in a pub, they've got the music up, their music up, yeah. right, t t techno blaring, right, they've got a telly on watching a soap opera, yeah. and I wanna go, choose one or the other! Yeah. I mean, what are you watching? I got a minicab last night. I imagine you don't travel in minicabs, but the guy driving, one of those guys, he's, he's, I know he's driving a cab on a Friday night. Okay, no one wants to be doing that. And he had, uh, one of those phone, you know, the little earpieces that you put yeah. in, so it looks like they're talking to themselves. And he's there, and he's, so he goes, where are you going? I went, oh, crouching. He went, there you go. Well, I don't know. And he's chatting on his mobile phone the whole time. His voice was so loud. He had the radio on as well. Oh. And he wasn't concentrating on the road. I, I, and I, I was like, I just got, look, I'm paying you ten pounds here to take me somewhere. Please, just s stop chatting or arranging your social life for two minutes. Yeah. Get to my destination safely, and then you can you can resume your conversation. My, my favourite one is uh, uh, I'm going to so and so terrace, please. Where's that? Mm. I want to go right. You're not it's not, you're not taking me then. Yeah. I mean I I, I don't know. I don't <laughs> know. Exactly. I don't drive. That, I'm paying you. That's fine. Paying out. you. That's got to be part of the service. But I mean uh, I know people have been in many cabs, didn't know where I was, and didn't have an A to Z. No, I went, I got I came. But, I was in East London once. I said to him, I'm going to. Uh, Going to the North London, he went, uh, where specifically? I went, uh, Swiss Cottage, he went, sure, sure. I said, do you know the way? He went, yeah, 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 yeah. Set off, along the way, he went, do you know the way? I said, well, oh, I thought you knew. He said, I said, have you not got an He went, no. He was one of those guys who'd just taken his car out in the middle of the night. <laughs> that was all he had. Yeah. He, all he had, all his credentials were he had a car. No <laughs> map, no torch, the two other things I bring with me. And he said, uh, so we're driving along, he went, he went, uh, I could probably get you to Camden. I was like, okay. He went, to you start. Know the, I mean, that yeah. is the start. Exactly. He went, do you know the way to Camden? I thought, pull over. It's not worth it. I'd rather hitchhike. I'd rather walk. Ludicrous. Those people who just go out. Yeah, they just can take a car out. Yeah. Doing a well, I bought a car. Oh. Have you ever done that? No, well, I, I, you know, I, I'm sick of living here. Mm. And you say about people hassling you. Do you, when right? you say here, you mean the world, don't you? No, just, just, just <laughs> in London who's doing the adding now. Mm. Uh, the other, the other week actually walking home from here, uh, and like you say, there's always someone hustling you, saying, do you want to buy this? Do you want one of these? Uh, going down Carnaby Street, right? There's your, there's your first mistake. He said, uh, into meditation. <laughs> so I was like, oh, and I had a bit of time to kill, so I thought, I'll have a chat, right? Have you got to, oh, we've never got time, <laughs> we're too busy. Yeah, I thought you were too busy, but for But I said, what, what's all that then? What do, what's, what, what do you do? And he said, we teach you how to breathe. <laughs> it's like, well, I'm 30. I think <laughs> <that's> <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've done all right. I know you sort of say, I'll forget it. <laughs> I'll forget it. <laughs> I'm 30. And in, in, in Selfridges they do, um, uh, th like Evian or whatever, that water company there, and, and they've got like little glasses of water, <laughs> and you walk past and they go, have you ever tried this? <laughs> <laughs> it's water. <laughs> yeah. Oh, uh, we go, we'll try it, you go, Jesus Christ, is that what water is? <laughs> what have I been drinking then? 
You've been drinking piss and mud. <laughs> have I? I'll have a bottle. <laughs> anyway, listen, Rockbusters. Oh, come on then. Let's get it done. Um Really? Yeah. Come on then. Right, so cryptic clues and initials, you work it out, it's a band and stuff. Yeah. Right, Brilliant. first one. Bob Olness. Uh, the first clue, <laughs> um, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so we took him off and he threw him away. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's the clue, the initials okay. T-B. T-B. Okay. Right, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took him off and threw them away. Second one, the Scottish monster has got a, a, a bit of a tan. Right, the Scottish monster has got a bit of a tan. Okay. That's, uh, that's TD, right? <laughs> and, uh, the last one, uh, well, the, uh, the 60s singer had a heart attack whilst he was having it away. We won't be seeing him again. <laughs> right, and that's <laughs> FNM. FNM. <laughs> well, the 60s singer's had a heart attack. He was having it away. We won't be seeing him again. Email in. Ricky Dots your face. Remember this is to K. save Rockbusters. If people don't get this, right, it's no more. So you better, if you want this to feature this day, you better get the clues. Alright. Good work, Carl. Uh, we'll give those clues again after uh, the next tune. What we play? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I love it, don't you? Uh, love, love it. it. Good, it's a good, good stomping pop number one rock. Uh, the first clue was, uh, the doctor said part of the foot and the leg was no good, so he took them off. He threw him away. Yeah. The initials TB. Yeah. Right? Go on. Toe, knee, Bennett. <laughs> Alright, that's Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Tony Bennett. Yeah. Okay, that's a warning. That's a yellow card. That is a yellow card, but you've, you can still get the points. Alright. Alright, the second one. Uh. That's Scottish fella. We've got to speed this show no, up. Hang on a minute, hang on. I've just got to make sure it's right. We don't want to look stupid. Right? <laughs> that Scottish monster has got a bit of a tan. I don't think we can look stupid with right? material like this. T-T-D. That Scottish monster's got a bit of a tan. The answer there, the darkness. I'll give you that. Right. Uh, the 60s singer, he had heart attack the other way whilst, uh, having it away. You won't be seeing him again. The initials F and M. That's Faith No More. Adam Faith. Change addiction just because I think things are, are rocking up. They are indeed <laughs> rocking yeah. up in the land this year, Steve. Yes, that's good news. I think Evanescence, then the darkness, rock tastic. XFM one hundred four point nine. Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant, and Carl Pilkerton of a Saturday. Can I just say that the shaving your arse feature yeah. <laughs> from earlier? Uh, if you missed that, that was half past one. That was a discussion on shaving your arse. Yeah. That uh, was great stuff. But that seems to have caught the public imagination. Yeah. We've had so many emails. We've had someone telling us exactly how to shave your arse. Yeah. So if you need that information, I can probably forward it to you. Well, I think this will be the year of rock and arse. <laughs> exactly. But uh, it's extraordinary how, you know, just a simple discussion like that that mm. you would think perhaps was crass, crude. And mind you, our, our listeners do like Carl talking about monkeys. Sure. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. It's not like it's, it, it's something to be proud of. Mm. It's not like we changed a nation or, or freed a, a people or oh, found no. a cure for something. We we hit them in their, you know, at their level sure. with monkeys and asses. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's what our listeners love. Yeah. <laughs> monkeys and asses. Yeah. We should put that on the poster. And they go together, because I, um, I joined the zoo, uh, uh, last time we went down and became friends of the zoo, right? Oh, right. I thought you had to sit in a, <laughs> no, in a no, cage no, for, no. uh, and, uh, it, th that thing happened. We were, I, I went straight for the chimps, of course. right? And there's sort of like three sort of, uh, big sort of adult ones there. And, um, there's people with their kids, and I could see the people just putting their kids away as one of them went up and started putting his face up the other ones. Oh. Sure. And it was sort of like, I just can't be bothered to explain this yeah. to my children. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I wanted to just move my, oh, come on then. There's the lions. <laughs> going to have a look at the lions. Yeah. What are they doing? They're just sniffing each other's asses. <laughs> yeah. Yes.